This tutorial reviews deformity correction planning in the AP lower limb. In deformity procedures from the green man, choose from the full leg icon planning option if the whole lower limb is to be assessed or just the individual limb such as the tibia if that's the area in question. Open the image and scale as normal. Here the linear tool has been used to outline a 50mm section of the ruler which has been placed at the level of the bone. The distance is placed in the field and a marker. This moves us to the planning stage. Looking at the full view of the limb, we apply the mechanical axis deviation wizard, then move to axis definers, then reduction. Generally it's easiest to position the three components of the wizard at the hip, knee and ankle, click in the area and zoom to that area. Then by clicking between the square handle and the circle this section of the wizard can be moved to the appropriate position and sizing to the femoral head, moving the cross box to sit just inside the piriformis fossa. This will roughly outline the anatomical axis in a normal limb. Panning down or using the scroll bar, move to the knee joint. Position this across both the tibia using either the maximum width or the lowest part of the plateau on either side. Similarly, use either the maximum width of the condyles or use the lowest point on either side, whichever you find to be the best reference to establish the centre of the joint. Moving down again, centre over the talus to identify the ankle joint centre. We can look at the different angulations which have been identified. So all of the standard measures are listed here with their normal range, the values that have been measured and those that are highlighted in red represent values which are outside of the normal range. Hovering over the various values also identifies which particular measure they are. Once the greatest deformities have been identified, mechanical axis can be turned off. As the assessment stage is complete, now move to axis definers to select the aspects of the bone or joints appropriate to the case which I'll identify and assist in correcting angular deformities. For the purposes of demonstration, axis definers have already been positioned and turning them on with the tick box allows us to see those that have been identified. It's possible to position axis definers that reference the joint, the mid shaft and the joint line distally on the femur and the proximal joint line mid shaft and distal joint line on the tibia. These can be anatomical or mechanical references in the case of the femur. Going to each of the hot spots shows you the different axis definers available and for a fuller description it's worth looking at Smart Help which describes each of the definers in detail. Just click to whichever one is most appropriate for the case. The blank removes the last selection. Only combine all mechanical or all anatomical definers together. Mechanical definers are indicated by red in their icons. Up to three positions can be identified. Once these are in place, the crossed red circles represent cora points or centres of rotation and angulation that will correct without translation. These have been automatically created by the software and the positions of the axis definers. Any default angles can be changed by clicking on the meter. Any of these can be right clicked on and a cut can be created. Three choices are available, open, closed or dome. Please review Smart Help for the functions of the closed and dome cuts. Choosing open and closing the help panel to see more detail allows us to view the cut and position it. Centre the round handle on one cortex and the back of the arrow handle on the other cortex where the cut's to be located. 
Continue down the rest of the bone. Cut three. If any translation is required, right click, unlock the Cora, and then the cut can be picked up and moved. Right clicking allows relocking to the Cora or locking the position where it is currently. The automatically calculated angulations are shown for each cut on the left in the reporting panel and other values that have been identified are also visible. There is a cut display panel that shows a visual amplitude for each cut for its angulation and translation. If there is a lateral view, corresponding cuts can be linked together. The cut in question is shown in yellow when highlighted. Now moving to the third step of reduce, which gives a visual display of the planned cuts. Selecting reduce shows a gold line which represents the current position of the mechanical axis and some purple circles which can be moved over each of the hinge points of the cuts as required. Initially they will appear in the middle of the cut line. When all have been positioned, move to the handle distal to the cut and use this to open up to the angulation, in this case 11.5. Noting in the panel on the left the amount of angulation that's been achieved. For any translation, use the cross handle. So currently, fragment 3 has been moved by 2 millimetres with an angulation of 11 degrees. Continue up the leg. When all the fragments have been moved, a more natural view can be obtained by using the top handle to rotate at the hip joint and bring the leg back into a vertical position. Overall length that's been achieved and noting the position of the mechanical axis is now over the center of the knee joint. If a plan is to be created on the other side, add new procedure and start on the left hand side of the body. Anything shown on the screen will be saved or committed depending on whether you require the plan or the reduction screen to be saved, choose the appropriate one. This ends the tutorial on the AP lower limb.